You can listen to The Professional Left wherever you get your podcasts on Netroots Radio or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for October 15th, 2021. It's not safe for work. Record live from the Cornfield Resistance, where two weeks before Halloween, the war on Christmas is on. It's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Something like 603 times Fox News has mentioned Christmas in the past 24 hours. They got one playbook. It's a great excuse for Fox News viewers whose kids are no longer speaking to them, though. Yeah. No, no, it's the war on Christmas. You know, yeah, no. that's why I'm totally alone. <laughs> yeah. With no one but Laura Ingram to keep me company. You know, she's her soothing voice keeping me company, <laughs> lulling me to sleep. Lulling me to sleep. I love it when she sings the entire Messiah forward and back. It just, it puts me to sleep every time. Mm -hmm. With Mark Levin doing the harmonies. It's so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Levin on harmony was yeah. just, I can't imagine. Yeah, orchestra for dental drills and tin drums. It's, there you go. Oh, God. And, you know, it's, it's uh, yeah, you're right. It's an excuse for people to say, my kids, my grandkids don't hate me. They don't think I'm nuts. I'm just, it's the darn liberals. It's those darn, you know what it is, Blue Gal? It's the Biden vaccine mandates. It's the Biden vaccine mandates. Yeah. Ruining everything for everyone. Are ruining really. everything for everybody, even yeah. though it, it has really... Not. helped to increase vaccination rates a lot. This is the stupidest war I've ever heard of. It is. These idiots just believe whatever Sean Hannity shits into their skull yeah. on a daily basis. There's no principle behind it at, at all. all. At and, all. But there's yeah. no co coherent anything on the right anymore. It's just, well, there is. It's, it is. I hate anything on the left. And the left is defined as whatever Fox News tells me is on the left. And that's it. That's it. There's there's no rhyme or reason to it. It's I find it interesting that the right wing voter or the right wing noisemaker out there in the public, people that are screaming at school boards and so forth. Right. Um, about particularly about critical race theory, which is not taught in K through 12 schools. Let's be yeah. clear. But they seem so upset about their their children, if they have any children, but children in general, white children in particular, being taught the history of racism right. in America. They don't want that. And is that because they want to believe that there is no such thing as racism? Or is it that they just don't want the the cultural denunciation that comes from being a racist? Because that's the big complaint among Trumpers. I hate being called a racist. I have black grandbabies and I love them. So therefore I'm not a racist. I have a black sure. friend and therefore I'm not a racist. Yeah. Everyone has a special black friend to prove that they're not racist. I think right. they, they, so, they share a lot of them, but everyone has a, <laughs> everyone has a special, I mean, Michael Steele used to be their special black friend yeah. who would prove that we're not racist. We got a black. And, well, and, he, and all of the, any five African-American people who show up at a Trump rally are put right behind Donald sure, Trump. Of course. And that's, you know, that's, that's the thing. It's, it's not, um, the, the, the cleverest thing, I'm not sure if it's the truest thing. One of the cleverest things I saw was, was pictures, black and white pictures of really angry, racist, Southern white school kids, you know, high school kids, mm -hmm, thugs, mm -hmm. um, pelting people trying to integrate a school with, you know, with lies and filth and things and signs. And the caption was, the fear of critical race theory comes down to these people who did this in the 50s and 60s, not wanting their kids to learn they did it in the 50s and 60s. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there, I mean, a lot of these people are just fucking ashamed and in denial. And because as we've said many times, as Alan Rickman said long before we did, villains don't think they're the villains. Right. So right. calling them a villain is 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 just rude and wrong and, and an affront to their good Christian sensibilities because no none of these people think they're the bad guy. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. they manifestly are, but that's the problem. You're not going to persuade people to stop doing something if they don't understand that it's wrong and they don't understand that this is wrong. They understand that the entire liberal media and every liberal in America and all the black people and all the brown people and all the mouthy women and Joe Biden and Chinese satellites are all in a giant conspiracy 
to keep the truth from them. And they can only believe what they see on Fox News and Newsmax. That's it. Mm -hmm. There's no other source they can believe. And that's that's the end of these people. That is the the ecological, I'm sorry, the the sociological and evolutionary cul-de-sac that they have trapped themselves in. There's no way out for them. There's no way forward or out. They have to keep digging deeper because the alternative is to look at themselves in the mirror, see them as we see them, even partially, mm -hmm. and that will destroy them. That's why the whole idea of messaging just makes me laugh uh, because the whole argument that our never Trump allies have and that half the people in this country have against Democrats is we message poorly. You know, we're bad messengers. You need to message better. You know, people in this country don't even know what's in the Joe Biden bill. All right, let's take one thing, for example, just one thing, not, not what's in the bill, just a thing. Critical race theory is not taught in any school in this country. Every racist idiot who watches Fox News in the country is hysterical that their kids are being brainwashed by something that doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. Now, this has been messaged on the left and by school boards and by teachers and by boards of education and every other source I can think of that used to be credible to death. And they simply, it never fucking penetrates. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how well you message. It doesn't matter how much you engage. It doesn't matter how many different ways you tell them this is not a thing and I can prove to you why they have... They have decided this is one of the many, many hills they're going to goddamn well die on. And that's why messaging is kind of a joke to me. I don't understand what the perfect message is when you can take something that is so obviously debunkable as, as vaccines mm -hmm. or as critical race theory. And, and all the experts and all the language and all the outreach and all the handholding and all the please, grandma, please get the shot. None of it works because these people are fucking brain dead. You can't talk a zombie out of being a zombie. They're a zombie. They're a zombie for life. That's never going to change. So then you have to change your strategy from how do we reason with these inherently unreasonable, irrational creatures to how do we contain the damage they're doing to our country? And the first step is talking honestly about them, which is the thing that the media will not do. Mm -hmm. So speaking of Christmas, well, and, and Eric Bollard has a good article today about at press run about the press is not talking about what's in the build back better bill at no. all. No, they're they not. They refuse to list it. But you know who has been talking about what's in the build back better bill? Elizabeth Warren. Yeah. I saw She's her. She's been that. on late night shows. <laughs> I know. And Pete Bernie Buttigieg. Sanders has been on late night. I I can't believe how many liberals are out there on television this week. Mm-hmm talking about what's in the bill over and over again. And so there is messaging going on. Well, um, yeah, you, I think you and I sometimes don't see it because we're, we're neck deep in this all day long. And if it is uh, a progressive or a Democrat talking about something we already know, because <laughs> yeah. you and I can it's like, okay, quote chapter it. and verse about yeah. what's in the build back better bill. Yeah. Well, um, and can I just say that messaging is a funny word? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because because I don't understand how the savvy political experts think that it works, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they, they seem to be talking about a group of people who are so fucking clueless that they can't tell the difference between the parties. There's a fascist party and the crazy racist party and the not fascist, not crazy racist party. And the fascist, crazy racist party is doing fascist, crazy racist things every fucking day. And the the normal party, the same party, is trying to stop them or do other things or pass policies or fix pipes and things like that. Mm -hmm. But this group of people who needs to be messaged to are apparently so clueless that they have no idea the, uh, who's on which side of anything. But they can be persuaded by a good ad and some straight talk. And I think and, we sometimes forget to us political junkies that the default position in America is don't vote. Oh, yeah. No, I, I understand that. You know, but that's yeah. not what I'm hearing from the savvy political act. Yeah, right, right. I'm right. hearing that there's people out there who can be persuaded, who are on the fence. Right. What fucking fence are they on? No. And, yeah. and these people are so, but they're so politically tuned in that they can be flipped back and forth every election by messaging. <laughs> well, so, if your salary depends on being able to flip people back and forth by messaging and you're talking to a first time candidate or a. Oh, yeah. Somebody who, oh yeah, I want to get out there and persuade people to vote for me. Uh, you know, your your if your salary depends on that myth, mm -hmm. uh, you're going to keep on pushing it. Well, and I, I've heard every time this subject comes up, even lightly comes up. You know, mm -hmm. okay, who exactly are these people? What do they read? Where are they getting? Are they getting the message from Fox News? In which case, they're Republicans. 
So they're unreachable. Where are they getting this news? Where are they getting the, I don't know what's in everything critical race theory? Are they getting it from their kids' papers? Are they getting it from grit? Are they getting it from the daily shopper, the the penny saver? Mm -hmm. Where are they standing in line at the grocery store looking at the National Enquirer? Where are they getting the information on which they're basing their stupid decisions? And, and, And whenever I hear that conversation go down that road, the people who are selling this bullshit Talk, start talking in very big, glowing, gassy terms. Like, the American people, this. The American, you know, yeah. voters are not that smart. You know, voters are very smart. Voters are very savvy. Voters aren't very savvy. And like, oh, you have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. You, mm-hmm. ha- you have this bullshit theory of politics that's about 50 years out of date. But because you control the camera and the microphone, you're just going to keep selling it. And I haven't seen any example of, of messaging doing anything substantial. On, on that level. In fact, we had a bench test of this in 2020. We were told with absolute certainty by the savviest of all political operators, the Lincoln Project guys, who've gotten over 1 million Republicans elected in the last five years, uh, told us, if you just give us all your money and get the hell out of our way, we will knock off Susan Collins, we will knock off Lindsey Graham without even breaking a sweat, because we fucking know messaging, man. We know how to get voters to the polls. And you know what? Every candidate they targeted lost. I'm sorry, every candidate they targeted won by more than they won in the previous election. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I want all the savvy message people to shut up because you because clearly you don't know how to run in a Democratic primary or in a general election. You know how to get racist to the polls, but so do I. I just, you know, <laughs> yeah, so does point. any idiot. Yes. <laughs> and, and so the, the thing that bothers me is not that Democrats are bad at fighting. There are Democrats stacked three deep who are willing and able and eager to fight. Katie Porter is a warrior. Mm-hmm. Pete Buttigieg can explain everything. And you're right, uh, Elizabeth Warren was on television. Yeah. The problem we have is that we have an arsenal full of mortar shells, but no mortars. Mm-hmm. We mm-hmm. have no delivery system. There is no liberal Fox News. There's no liberal OAN. There's liberal crooks and liars. There's liberal driftglassblogspot.com. Yeah, there's, right. there's Hal yeah. Sparks on the radio, but there is no equivalent at all. So, and- so then it gets down to who gets booked on the Sunday shows. Well, I don't think it gets down to that. You and I had this conversation earlier this week True. about I would rather have Elizabeth Horn on a 10 minute slot on Seth Meyers. Fair point. Yep. Than have her be on three Sundays out of four yep. on Meet the Press. I, I stand corrected. She's You're not right talking that. to anybody that needs any persuasion. Right. If but she's on Meet the Press. And that's the thing. She's on an, and I agree wholeheartedly with that but she's on an entertainment show right well she's on a show where occasional voters are going to watch to be entertained and they're going to say oh yeah. wow child care i need that that's what that bill does oh my god i need that my my child care place closed during the pandemic and she's promising to reopen it with the build back better bill god that'd be great i better well support and, and, that right and this gets us back to i, I agree with you I'm, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm over here. You're absolutely right. Cause my wife is very smart. She's smarter than me. Smartest thing I ever did. Marry this woman. <laughs> um, but it gets back to the John Stewart discussion we used to have years ago, right? which is what the hell is John Stewart doing being the default news source mm-hmm. for millions mm-hmm. of Americans? Why right. is this comedy? And he used to make the joke. And why are they look. more, why are people that watch John Stewart more informed than any other news? Exactly. Source? And right. John Stewart, you say, look, I follow a show about puppets talking dirty. You know, why are you turning to me for the news? It's because, it's precisely because the people who are in charge of the news, who are supposed to be doing the news, delivering the message of what's in the bill and why it's important to you and here are the two sides, will not do it. Have just categorically failed to do their job. So because the mainstream media is so afraid of being tagged as liberal and so afraid of being Which is exactly why they won't talk about what's in the bill. Exactly. They want to talk about the price tag and they want to talk about he said, she said, both sides. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Which leaves us back where we started, which is there is no delivery system, reliable news based delivery system for all the warriors who are lined up three deep. To, to... And, and you and I are two of them. Yeah, we are. Yeah. And, and, and believe me, the, the eight or nine listeners we have to this podcast, we value <laughs> no. 4, 000, 5, 000, 6, 000 listeners we have yeah. to this podcast. We value, we love you we all. value immensely. Ha- happy week. We, we love we, you all. Hope you and guys when we get a picture of okay. you dressed. When we get a picture of you dressed up in both sides, don't merch. Oh, it makes it just our warms day. our hearts. It really. Oh does. my gosh, we run to the other one and say, "Did you see? She's wearing our T-shirt." Oh yeah. yay! Yeah. So we, everybody's doing their part. 
The people who aren't doing their part to save our democracy are the people who are constitutionally charged with doing their part to save our democracy. Exactly. Yes. Drift Glass, uh, just a personal note. Yesterday, I got my booster shot. Yes. Yes. And I also got my flu shot at the same time, which Mm -hmm. is okay to do. Yeah. Uh, I'm going tomorrow. All the experts. I'm going tomorrow. Drift Glass goes tomorrow. I'm he was going to go today, and I said, oh, no. No, no. Got a podcast. <laughs> Today's a podcast, podcast day. Yeah. You don't get to go and do something that might knock you on your fanny. So um, I'm, I'm wearing my union uh, my union suit so I can just drop my flag. <laughs> they don't want to put it there during one, I, I You keep telling me that, but I, I don't think you're right about that. <laughs> um, one on each cheek, and I'm good to go. I won't no. be sitting for a while. but No. No. But uh, I had, for the booster shot, uh, no ill effects at all. Uh, I wasn't even tired. So, uh, if you're eligible for that, if you have a heart condition or asthma or some other condition that would indicate getting a third shot, and you can look that up on any of the pharmacy websites that give out free flu shots, uh, I recommend getting one because I, yeah, you and, say that, but last night in your sleep, you were whispering, <laughs> you were whispering, you know, George Will makes a lot of sense. No, I wasn't. And I'm, I'm kind of worry that it's working on you on a subconscious level no. you're not even aware of. No? The, okay. the nanites. In yeah, the, they're, that's they're, the latest thing is the nanites. There are no nanites. <laughs> there, there are, are no, no nanites. nanites. Hey, Kristen Cinema's in Europe, Drift Class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm just, you know, this Bill Back Better Bill, I'm just not worried about it. I'm, no. I'm just, I'm, and, and maybe I'm just, you know, nuts. I may be crazy, but I see... The Progressive Caucus holding together and continuing to quote unquote message on what's in the bill. They seem very united and very on message. Mm-hmm. And uh, watching, as I said, this was a week for liberals on television. I was quite surprised. Pete Buttigieg was on. He was awesome. Was uh, It's Adam Schiff week. Yep. <laughs> yep. Rachel Maddow's half hour infomercial for his new book was, you know, <sighs> informative. Mm-hmm. Uh He's uh, got all the receipts about Kevin McCarthy. That's yeah. there's some very funny anecdotes going on there, uh, and even you know the there was a little bit of a panic on Twitter yesterday about the Stormy Daniels bribes. The uh, statute of limitations ends for that next week, uh-huh. and I had to remind people that Donald Trump took those bribes as a tax deduction. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. he signed those <clears throat> returns in mm-hmm. 2018. Yeah. So everything's no. still in play, folks, yeah. in terms of that. Uh, he just keeps criming. And right. so at some point, the molasses speed of the, you know, molasses in January speed of the Justice Department will catch up with him. Yeah. If you keep renewing your criming license, then <laughs> eventually <laughs> we're going to come to your house and yeah. take take you in well, someplace. Well, and it, it is... I think the DOJ and the everyone who's sort of on that side of the wheels of justice uh, are are going with the full mobster. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're going to use his tax returns and take him down. Well, he's already um, in Florida and he already has some form of syphilis to the brain or something. So he's mm-hmm. like he's like two thirds of the way to the end of Al Capone's life. Mm-hmm. You know, he's mm-hmm. already doing the two things that that of the three that Al Capone was famous for at the end of his life. The third being going to prison. So uh, well, two out of three. And, and his speech in Iowa on Sunday, I, I still laugh because, you know, Hal Sparks went through the whole thing. And you kept coming in and going, is that background noise for you? Yeah. Are you actually watching? I said, I'm watching okay? Hal talking about it. So and then it's she okay. looked at me with big, vacant eyes and said, you know, George Will it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> I never I, said that. No, she never said that. <laughs> um, but but bloodthirsty gangs, Drift Glass. Yes. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> Use the term. Bl- Since Biden was elected, bloodthirsty gangs are roaming our streets of mm-hmm. our country. Real biblical shit. <laughs> so I'm going to keep that in mind. Bloodthirsty well, gangs, Drift Glass. <laughs> what I've seen in lots of places, people very intelligently um, commenting that what you're watching in Congress, in the House and the Senate is what normal legislative stuff used to look like. Mm -hmm. You have one side with, you know, clearly articulable priorities and goals and policies and pay-fors, I might add. Mm -hmm. And you have the other side going, no, 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 I don't want to hear you. Except all of that's happening in the same party now. 
Yeah. This yeah. is not negotiating with the other side of every, of every issue is now cinema and mansion. Well, and this is what Steve M said at his blog, yeah. which was the Republican Party is the party of unpopularism. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they, they, they're out. They're done with they do governing. Not care, as he said, they do not care what voters want at all. No. Not, and never not, have. No to them. Yeah. You know, the American people. No, shut up with the American. You don't know yeah. what the American people want. You don't care. No. The Republican Party does not care. They do and, not have a platform. And at, at, and there's a a point at which it just sounds like a calliope of stupid shit. Mm-hmm. It, mm-hmm. It's oh that guess who said something stupid today? And I just I just shrugged my shoulders. I don't know. I can give you a thousand names and a thousand possibilities, and they might all be right because that's mm-hmm. the stupid timeline we live on. Yeah. But all legis- this legislating that used to take place across all legislative bodies now only happens inside one party, and we're watching it happen. But this is how legislation gets made. The, yeah. the miracle is not that this is happening. The miracle is that Joe Biden got everything else through so quickly up until now. Right, right. Now he's going to have to do what every president has has always had to do, except during a time of war, which is just work it and work it and work it and find a middle and find a compromise, all of which I hate and all of which I think is just mm-hmm. irks me. And do you want to do a few things for a lot of time or a well, lot of things for a little time? And whatever you negotiate away... Yeah. You put in a single bill and say, all right, Let's vote, vote no on whatever it is. Right. And then it can't be about the $3.5 trillion. It's about the thing. Mm-hmm. And so when you vote against the Violence Against Women Act, it's a thing that you right. did. And, and don't think for a minute it's going to persuade any Republicans to stop no. being Republicans. But, but you, there are a, a tiny number of people in that waffly center mm-hmm. um, who might – wonder why their congressperson voted against you know rape kits for women right exactly um um and that's it that's a campaign ad and that's exactly why the bipartisan infrastructure bill was so important to certain republicans in the senate is they did not want a campaign ad that said you your senator voted against this bridge right being repaired um i want to just take one more second about Kristen cinema sure um something i found out that to me says a lot about her and um i don't like dumping on democrats but uh i'm i'm really upset with her (laughs) and as a lot of people are um i think there is a principled position to be made of telling the press and tell and that means telling the public and telling your voters this is a negotiation and i don't negotiate in public right yes because then you are burned over things that you wanted to get perhaps and weren't able to get in the negotiation. And so you were for this and then you're, you voted some something that had that taken out of it. Well, yes, I negotiated to get there. Well, that all gets lost in the mess. And well, so and it's that, just, that's the big stick they used to beat John Kerry. Right. Oh, you were for it before you were against it. Right. No, I, right. This is how you negotiate, but that's doesn't, it Translate doesn't matter. Well right. You're a flip flopper. Right. Right. If you go, if you come out in public for something and then you vote for something that's again, that doesn't have that in it, mm-hmm. you're a, you're, you're a bad person. You're so unprincipled scoundrel. there is a principle involved in saying, I don't negotiate in public. And I get that. Kirsten Cinema's position, however, has been, I don't negotiate in public. And what I found out this week was I only negotiate with the white house. Now that is the most prima donna bullshit I have ever heard. Mm-hmm. She is a member of the Senate Democratic Caucus. Uh-huh. Her colleagues don't know what she wants. Her colleagues yeah. don't know what is happening with those negotiations. And for her to say, well, I only negotiate with the White House is, you know, it, it says a lot about her and her ego and her narcissism. Mm-hmm. And we just don't have time for that in the Democratic Party. No. And so she's, in my opinion... Speaking today, she's a one-term senator. Yeah, and I hope we can hold on to that seat. Uh, Me but too. Cinema's got to go. <laughs> well, in and, my and, personal opinion. And the counterfactual, which you know, I know we talked about last week, is Bernie Sanders. Mm-hmm. Bernie Sanders has just as much right, and just as in in principle, more of a right mm-hmm. to say, I, "No, no, I'm getting Medicare for all," or "Or I'm going to burn this bill down." Right. But right. he doesn't do that, and he's because he, he's made he, that clear on television. He said, "You know, right. I love Medicare for all, and I that's what I would want." But I'm one of fifty Democrats, right? And so I have to ask for things that I want, and I'm not going to get all of them, right? 
And that's how the how, how government works and right. democracy. Right. And Kristen Cinema is just a selfish child mm-hmm. who wants attention, the way she dresses, the way she talks, the way she frumps, the way she flips, the way she pounces or bounces around the Senate, the way she decides, I'm going to Europe. Bye. Mm-hmm. Is all such fucking narcissistic bullshit. And it's and oh yeah, I used to believe a lot of things. I don't believe any of those things anymore. And well, what am I, what are you going to believe next week? Well, I don't know. Depends on, you know, which way the wind's blowing. And you're right. She's one term, but she has a chip now. Mm-hmm. She right. gets to play the this chip until her term is over. And she's going and to I've use it. And I've made a mistake in a past podcast of saying it's 2026. It's not. It's 2024. Yeah. So. But that's, that. you know, that's, guess what? You know, <laughs> I remember vividly the Obamacare bill. Yes. I remember the, the corn husker kickback, whatever it was called. I remember people, you know, hijacking, holding the whole thing ransom for ransom because you needed 60 votes. Got to have 60 votes. 51 won't do. 55 won't do. 59 won't. Got to have 60, which is nowhere in the Constitution. That is simply Republicans threatening to filibuster everything, which goes back a long long time, not two minutes ago. And and arranging the rules so that it's a lift of the finger rather than a talking filibuster because they're all too old to want to do that. And back then it was Joe Lieberman saying, I will blow the whole thing up if you have a public option in there. Mm-hmm. Which mm-hmm. you know, it, well, would you rather have nothing, or would you rather have the the rickety structure that has provided my family with affordable health insurance since it was passed? Well, yep. I'll take the, I'll take the second one, and then I would like to come back and revisit this, and that's exactly what Biden is trying to do. Drift glass. Mm-hmm. I feel the effects of my vaccination coming on. Oh, no. And I just want you to know that the most eloquent and lacerating and accurate descriptions of the Republican Party now come from the former leading lights of the Republican Party. Yes. Intellectuals like George Will, speechwriters like Michael Gerson and Bill Kristol, presidential <sighs> campaign strategists like Stuart Stevens and Steve Schmidt. And the list goes on and on. Yes. Yes. That quote was from Lawrence O'Donnell this yes. week. Uh, in public, he said that. He wasn't in, drunk. On television, he, he said, said it on that. on TV. And, and as he was introducing Jennifer Rubin <laughs> and Eddie Glaude Jr., who I have, you know, very Eddie serious Glaude, problems who, with. who voted third party in 2016. Who, who, who told people to vote third party. Who used his, like Matthew Dowd, used his platform to tell people to vote third party. Because why, you know, just, and then when, when Hillary lost, white people let me down. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, mm-hmm. you're, A, you're right. B, now, and then, then when people came to him and said, wait a minute, wait a minute, you were in whatever Newsweek or Time fucking magazine telling people to vote third party. Well, now is not the time for vote shaming. You know, <laughs> of course, it's never the time to shame someone who does something shameful as long as they have a seat at the goddamn table. As long as they're on TV, you don't shame them into that. But yeah, this is Lawrence O'Donnell, um, who. I just, it was jaw dropping. I, I wrote a whole post and it's been, you know, celebrated, celebrated, well received. Apparently, um, there's Charlie a guy named, Pierce tweeted it. Charlie Pierce, guy on Twitter named Charlie Pierce on, on the on the uh, social media platform that I was kicked off of in January <laughs> for calling someone trash. Um, so I, this is all a mystery to me. Apparently, thought you know he he likes Lawrence Donald, he respects him, respected his father, but he O'Donnell was just dead wrong, and he was dead wrong mm-hmm. because you know it is. It is clearly now MSNBC policy to rehabilitate Bush regime Republicans. Right. And And market themselves as the platform for those people. And and the emphasis in the sentence that I put in my own head when I reread it, because I was just stunned into immobility. I I was sitting with you in the living room when we were watching it, and you looked like you were ready to kill yourself. What? Well, I was ready to kill somebody. (laughs) Yeah. Um, The emphasis is on the word most in my mind. Yeah. Uh, the most eloquent and lacerating and accurate descriptions of the Republican Party now come from the former leading lights of the Republican Party. And then we go through the list, all of whom are either MSNBC employees or paid MSNBC contributors mm-hmm. or frequent guests. There's a, mm-hmm. And the list goes on and on because, yeah, they're all people who are signed, who have their paycheck signed by the same person who signed Lawrence O'Donnell's paycheck. Right. Clearly, m- maybe there's some sort of clearance sale. You know, they have, they have a quota they have to meet of putting – Charlie Sykes's and George Will's and and Rick Wilson's on TV X number of hours a day. That clearly seems to be something written into the MSNBC bylaws. And maybe Lawrence O'Donnell said, oh, look, I'll get all this shit out of the way in one shot. I'll name check all of them as I read from a Michael Gerson column and then introduce Jennifer Rubin. And then, 
That'll get, that's my that's quarter. Liberal month. TV. That's my quarter for a month, and I can go off and do whatever I want to do. But the idea that, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, the most eloquent and lacerating and accurate descriptions of the GOP have been coming from the left for decades now. These assholes shit on us, call us alarmists, call us crackpots, and then pretended we didn't exist once everything we told them was going to come came to pass. Mm -hmm. And the, they have contributed nothing to the political dialogue of this country other than stealing from liberals. And then saying, oh, no, I just invented this shit. I just made this shit up. I And I... I Went so far as to say, I wrote a 16,000 word, 16 and a half thousand word essay on Michael Gerson. you just Gerson. couldn't let it go, Driftglass. On Michael Gerson. <laughs> only on Michael Gerson. Saying, I know that everyone wants to huddle under Michael Gerson as, as a real moral man, a conservative, conservative, but he's a Christian moral man. No, he's not at all. Here are all the columns where he just lacerates the left and mocks Barack Obama and makes fun of people who are telling him that your party is problematic he never missed an opportunity to, to think to call barack obama everything but uppity and then when it all blew up in his face he kept his job at the washington post and then he gets pats on the head on msnbc for for ripping off the same people that he made a living shitting on five minutes ago and i have a real big problem with that I, and, and my problem with that is fairly well known but i have a really big problem with lawrence o'donnell being the launch pad for mm -hmm. this bullshit Mm -hmm. I am sick and fucking tired of there's a there's a limited amount of bandwidth available on cable television and a whole bunch of fucking bunch of it is being used these days to rehabilitate people who should be at the back of the line saying, may I please come in? How can I help you? Please give me a liberal to assist. Tell me what I can do to help you advance your agenda because my agenda is fucked. But they don't do that I, to, this morning. Who was on Morning Joe for 30 fucking minutes? Christy Todd Whitman. What was she saying? The Republican Party's crazy, but the Democrats are too. What we really need is a third party. Perhaps a third party is a good idea. And I just, I'm just looking up at heaven going, you know, I bring this on myself. I wonder, if, I wonder if she wants no labels candidates to come in and represent that third party. No, she has a, she has a new, I have a, I will, I'll tell you what, I will premiere the title of my post here on this podcast ah. and the title of my post, which is almost ready to print is here comes your 19th third way shakedown. <laughs> Going, yeah, I thought that was pretty clever too. That's really good. Going all the way back to the dark days of 2006 when David Brooks, just a young man fresh off the boat thought, you know what this country needs is a, is a third party to fight the Thomas delays on the right and the net roots Thomas delays on the left. Cause they primaried my very good friend, Joe Lieberman. So we need a, I don't know, let's call it a McCain-Lieberman party. And and since that, not since that time, it goes back before that, but every time one of these smug Beltway insider assholes stubs their toe or an Adam Kinzinger wakes up one day to discover that his Republican party is full of Republicans, mm -hmm. their solution is, well, we have to have a third party. Well, why can't you just help Democrats? Oh, no, Democrats are icky. They're bad. They, they want bad things. Well, what is it exactly about their agenda you don't like? Well, I don't like that they're not Romney, Ryan, 2012. That's what mm -hmm. I want. Mm -hmm. So um, in another post I wrote <laughs> today, I've been writing a lot, called Never Trumpers in Disarray, um, Jennifer Rubin and Jonah Goldberg are having a slap fight. Oh, no. I hate it when that I'm happens. sorry. No, Mona Charon. Mona Charon and, oh, Mona and Charon. on the bulwark about who's purer and who's uh -huh. the truer conservative. But but she finally goes out of her, she finally admits that look I I'm misquoting her now but there's nothing wrong with us trying to get inside the Democratic Party and make it do what we wanted to do uh huh that's not partisanship that's just realism and like of course because these people have they have nothing left we are as I said last week the last chopper out of Saigon right and and they have no place else to go but rather they're, than they're it, wearing their Russian mink coats into the soup kitchen they, after the so, revolution absolutely right. Yeah. And, and, and treating everyone as the help. And and sandwiches. And the people who, to them, yes. The, the people who warned, warned them this was coming are either still serfs to be, to be you know, to be Bossed waved around. away. Yeah. Or don't exist at all. Right. We don't exist at all. Lawrence O'Donnell doesn't, apparently doesn't believe the entire um, corpus of liberal critique of the right going back 30, 40 years exists at all. Or else why would he say what he said? Anyway, Yeah. You pushed a button of mine there, Blue Gal. Uh, <laughs> well, I've got another button to push. You know that Katie Couric is under fire this week. 
Uh huh. Because she uh, edited an interview she did with Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Oh, okay. where you know Ruth Bader Ginsburg in her nineties uh, basically said Colin Kaepernick should be grateful that he lives in the United States of America, mm-hmm. and uh, that didn't go along with the story that Katie Couric wanted to tell about RBG. And, you know, I get that, but you have an obligation. This is Katie Couric's job to cover Mm -hmm. these things. Do you know how, who Katie Couric called for journalistic advice on what to do about that answer to the question? I don't, but I'm, I'm looking, I'm averting my eyes now because I just, it's going to hurt me. It's, it's David Brooks. Oh, fuck. She called her good friend David Brooks, and he said, you should delete that because she probably didn't understand the question. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I wish I could delete David Brooks, <laughs> who doesn't understand anything. <laughs> Let me talk for a minute about Kimberly Guilfoyle. Yeah, please do. She's got a job now, Dirkla. Uh-huh. She's finance director. <laughs> who better? Who better? Uh, pardon Finance me for saying director this. Director of Make America Great Again Again PAC. Yeah. Okay. And um, you know, I can't wait for the financials to come out on that. Um, <laughs> I wonder how late they'll file their records with the FEC once he announces his candidacy. Never mind. Yeah. I'm sure she's deep, deep in the financial paperwork, getting she ready has, for an FEC filing. <laughs> she, she has the tits for it. That's all I'll say. <laughs> Yes, John Don Jr.'s mistress. Yes. Um That's... is but she was on uh Real America News, which is I think only on the web and Dish it... TV or something. I don't know. Is that a fishing show? Like yeah, R-E-E-L? I don't... <laughs> I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's something. Okay. Uh but she was on there calling for an audit of all fifty states, including Florida. And she's this should be bipartisan because we really care about election integrity on both sides, you know. So what she's saying is, fuck Guam and Puerto Rico, right? <laughs> yeah. All 50 states. And immediately someone asked Ron DeSantis, are you going to do an audit of the Florida <laughs> results? And he said, no. And Mexico will pay for it. Mexico will pay. Well, that's the point. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I wanted to thank you, Drift Glass, for that you're giving me the title of the post on that one. Because it was... Um, Kimberly Guilfoyle sets her webcam filter to mayonnaise. <laughs> she was literally transparent like Casper the Friendly Ghost. Yeah. yeah. And we figured it was a Halloween costume tryout because of the makeup also, you know. Mm-hmm. But, um, and I am really not someone that likes to particularly talk about women and their appearance as part of the conversation. No. But uh, setting that webcam filter was a choice. <laughs> Uh-huh. And she's had a, she made a number of bad lifestyle choices she, in her life. She has, and she's so, <laughs> ended up as you know Don Junior's mistress. So right. yeah, yeah. Um, you want to talk about uh the Matthew Dowd interview? Oh sure. Um, Anand Girahandis interviewed I, I, Matthew I'm Dowd, pro- right? Yes, Anand Girahandis, which and I apologize a thousand times if I'm mispronouncing that. Um, interviewed Matthew Dowd, um, candidate Matthew Dowd. Right. Not ABC News director Matthew Dowd, no. who does not exist anymore. Even in the, there's no evidence that ever, that it was ever true. And some of it he got right, and some of it he he missed some very important stuff, which kind of pissed me off because, you know, I'm never going to get a chance to interview Matthew Dowd. Mm, no, but he will. And the one thing he did focus on, um, with Matthew Dowd that kind of got there was he had a pat answer ready, a pat politician's answer ready. Um, but it was the same thing that he that. Uh, he wrote about uh, last year or earlier this year that I wrote very flatteringly about, which was he really got on the case of why are you rehabilitating ex Republicans at mm-hmm. at breakneck speed on television mm-hmm. when they were wrong? Why right. not just have people who were right all along in charge of shit and running for office and and you get behind them? Why why are you so horny to put Bill fucking Crystal and 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 Steve Schmidt? On television, no matter how badly they screw up over and over and over again, what's the deal with that? And I said, that's great. He's got a million followers on social media. Um, I hope that message goes far and wide. I don't know what good it'll do because it's it's the business model he's fighting against. He's not fighting against individual decisions. It's this is our company. This is what we make. We make former Republicans. Um, <laughs> but you know, churn them out of the. We churn them out. Uh, 
And when they, when they assembly line, right. (laughs) And you know, in three months when they blow out, we take them back to the shop and put them up on blocks and refit them. And, and we give them the full Newt Gingrich and they roll them back out again. Mm -hmm. And it never stops. They never stop to say, maybe this is evil. Maybe what we're doing is evil. Maybe these evil people shouldn't be rehabilitated over and over again and and repackaged to the public as something new. Uh, But what he didn't mention, which did piss me off, was the whole thing about, hey, didn't you used to believe the exact opposite of everything you're saying now? And didn't you used to make fun of people who say exactly what you're saying now? And didn't don't you block people who bring this shit up on social media? And didn't you burn down 170,000 tweets, your entire Twitter archive, which covers the time, by the way, you weren't a private citizen. You were the ABC News director for politics. You destroyed all of that, which is where the evidence is that all of the things I'm asking you are true, which nobody's going to ask Matthew Dapp. People have asked him on social media, and surprise, surprise, he's blocked them. So I'm glad he interviewed him. I'm glad he he challenged him on this whole because Matthew Dowd jumped out of the party 13 years ago. Mm-hmm. I don't care that he worked on George Bush's campaign. I I care that every time he has come to a come to a hard spot in his professional life, he has flipped his principles 180 degrees to accommodate whatever whichever way the wind is blowing, and he does that over and over and over again. That to me is a long term sign of insecurity and immorality. Um, and that fits in with why are you destroying the evidence of what you said and did during the 13 years you were at ABC News? And that's a really good question. And I don't think anyone's ever going to ask it, but I do appreciate the what he did do. It's the omissions that really, really kicked me in the gut. Mm-hmm. I wanted to talk for a moment about what to me was a very revealing interview with Nick Clegg, who is a Facebook executive. Uh, here's the quote about that he had about uh facebook i think it varies from person to person it's like everything good in life i would do it in moderation now (laughs) he's talking about social media yeah use it in moderation yeah don't uh don't be abused in the social media right everyone needs to decide for themselves but it's like everything that you enjoy do it in moderation would be my personal suggestion but that's my general guide for many things in life Now, he knows that Facebook spends millions and millions and millions of dollars to make their product addictive. Yes. And this is why they are having their tobacco company moment with the Congress. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, Facebook, they know their product is harmful and addictive. There's documented memos and so and research that they know that they've done. Yes. To, to show that it hurts young girls particularly mm-hmm. and uh, they continue to find ways to make it more addictive. And like the tobacco companies, they move to stage three, which is blame the user for having a personal problem if they can't right. quit. Right. So, um, and then I briefly, I want to congratulate Dmitry Muratov and Maria Ressa for winning the Nobel peace prize this week. Maria Ressa in particular has been really outspoken about Facebook (laughs) and about algorithms and how it used to be before, you know, the world changed that Mm -hmm. journalists were considered gatekeepers for what is true or not. And you had to fact check. Yes. And as opposed to, as opposed to calling David Brooks and saying, what what should I do? What should I I do? Just delete it. (laughs) Just delete it. Don't worry about it. Just delete it. (laughs) delete it because she didn't understand the question you don't want to embarrass her yeah maria ressa has been really outspoken against facebook and how these algorithms now determine what we read and determine what we see and the but she doesn't talk about tucker carlson uh in any of the interviews that i've seen um you know tucker carlson this week oh. was talking about the god yeah the uh what he what fox news is insisting even though the southwest uh, pilots union president, even on Fox News, has said this wasn't a sick out. In fact, pilots are taking extra shifts in order to make up for the lost flights that happened over the weekend, and they had mm-hmm. to cancel a lot of flights. Uh, it looks like pilots are working more hours and trying to fill in, you know, within the law because you can only be in the air for so many hours out of 24, but they're really trying to work hard. And uh, the sick out rate over the weekend was no different than it was in the summertime. Right. 
But Fox News is pushing over and over again. No, this is absolutely a reaction to Joe Biden's vaccine mandates that's causing flights to be canceled. And the president of the union was Mm -hmm. on Fox News saying point blank, bluntly, no possible misinterpretation. This is nothing to do with the vaccine mandate at all. Zero. Nothing. And by the way, as as um, as we all now know, the vaccine mandates and uh, testing mandates inside of Fox News are far stricter than the Biden administration exactly. vaccine mandates and, exactly. and testing. Um, but here's Tucker Carlson saying, uh, we don't know if it's true or not, but it sure seems true. Yeah, it sure seems true. You know, I, I wonder if that's how he reported the bloodthirsty mob that was outside of his house threatening to murder gangs, him. Bloodthirsty gangs, Drift Glass. Yeah. Bloodthirsty well, no. gangs. No, this was this was him reporting the bloodthirsty mob that was outside of his house. Oh yeah. That turned yeah. out to be you know six people and a tambourine. Right. Uh, but they they broke <laughs> Who my. Did do- not knock at his door. Yeah. They threatened my wife. They murdered my dog. Oh my god! And none of that ever happened. Yep. But it made for a very good story of Tucker Carlson, noble conservative martyr for Fox News. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then mm-hmm. you know came actual protests in the streets when he wanted to know um, why oh why uh, the the uh, those noble people who were just knocking on the Capitol door right, um, right. Were, were were being so mistreated you know same guy who called the cops on five guys in a tambourine mm-hmm. uh, could not understand why the why the patriots who showed up at the people's house to 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 weren't welcomed in with open arms welcome. and they had to they had to kick the door in to make their voices heard. Because if you listen to Tucker Carlson, you are a lost cause and I don't ever want to hear from you. Anyway, uh, Maria Ressa, Nobel Peace Prize winner, has a book coming out next spring called How to Stand Up to a Dictator. Excellent. And, uh, you know, she's she stood up to Duarte in the Philippines. So uh, looking forward to that book and uh, congratulations to her and uh, Dmitry Muratov for their Nobel Peace Prize. It's nice to see the good guys win. Uh, Hey, Drift Class, do you want to do a news roundup? Yeah. On that very positive note, uh, let's talk about the House Select Committee investigating the January 6th attack subpoenaed former Justice Department lawyer Jeffrey Clark, who tried to use department resources to push Trump's false claims of voting fraud in the 2020 election. The U.S. is lifting travel restrictions at the land borders with Canada and Mexico for fully vaccinated travelers. Joe Biden announced that the Port of Los Angeles will be operating 24 hours a day, seven days a week as part of an effort to relieve supply chain bottlenecks, which we talked about great length last week. Mm -hmm. The announcement follows a similar transition by the Port of Long Beach in September. Together, the ports in L.A. and Long Beach account for 40 percent of all shipping containers entering the United States. So if you're thinking about a civil war, think about cutting off 40 percent of all the shipping that comes to your shitty little town. I'm wondering, too, if part of what's going on isn't um, truck drivers deciding to retire because there's a nut. That's the next bottleneck. Oh, oh, I, as you know, uh, Blue Gal, I used to be in the workforce development business. Yes. And the the uh, we were revolutionary a million years ago when I did this for focusing not on everything, throwing money at everybody because there's never enough money for even 5% of the people you need to help. But we decided to focus on economic sectors that could not be exported. Mm-hmm. where a person's economic, social standing situation could be radically increased or or measurably increased with 16 weeks of training hmm. and that had industry certification attached to it so that you could move around the country and take your job with you wherever you go. Hmm. And the sectors, because there was this huge demographic bulge coming mm-hmm. that meant that a lot of people in manufacturing were going to leave and there was nobody mm-hmm. behind to fix that. And that would be a big problem. And it has been a big problem. The other sectors were, one of them was transportation, distribution, and logistics, mm-hmm. which are truck drivers and tr- and train engineers, people mm-hmm. who work on trains. Mm-hmm. A lot of people in their 50s and 60s who were approaching retirement, mm-hmm. and there was nobody behind to take over for them. So, yes, you push another button, Blue Gal. I, I hope push you're another happy. button. Well, mm-hmm. and I have noticed that uh, big companies like Target, who I have discovered through – uh, youngest child, you know, Target will pay pay for your college education. Yep. And you look at the fine print, and you have to major in logistics. <laughs> yep, exactly right. Exactly right. <laughs> because and you that's know what? what they need, and they're happy to pay for for your entire education if you're willing to go to work in that sector Absolutely. because they're desperate. There are manufacturers I know in the Chicago area who paid their workers uh, way through school as long as mm-hmm. it was engineering and manufacturing. Yeah. Right. Uh, and right. and and fun fact, I think. Well, this used to be true. I don't know if it still is. The high density urban area mm-hmm. um, is the hardest one to serve because yeah. it, it takes 
as much time to move a truck from like one side of Chicago to the to lake the other. It, as it takes to it get them to from Iowa. Yeah. Utah from to Iowa. Chicago. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Absolutely. It's, it's city a, driving and it, with a truck is just so hard. Well, yeah. and, and yeah. truck to train, to ship, to whatever is, is, is a, is a with thousands coming in is a massive undertaking and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's why it's logistics is a big part of it. Yeah. Um, anyway. The Biden administration announced a plan to develop wind farms along the entire U.S. coastline. Yeah. Is Mexico going to pay for it, Dirk? Uh, no, Mexico <laughs> will benefit from it. It will. Um, and, and fun fact, one of the things that we advocated strongly be manufactured in this country was windmills. I think they're, we need to surround Mar-a-Lago with windmills. Yes, all blowing inward. <laughs> Watch that hair just go every which way. You can't even go outside anymore, really. Um, despite what you read on your crazy Uncle Liberty's Facebook page, Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine does not contain fetal cells. Mm -hmm. And that is a James O'Keefe lie, by mm -hmm. the way. Despite what you heard and saw all over Fox News, Southwest Airlines flight cancellations have nothing to do with a vaccine mandate. In fact, Fox News' own vaccine and testing mandates are much stricter than the Biden administration's, and they seem to be able to program 24-7, 365. Uh, speaking of boutique third-party <laughs> bullshit, <laughs> Andrew Yang was murdered on Twitter. Uh, gang, gang. When Oh, yeah. I guess they're not there anymore. No, they? no, no. They weren't there to defend him uh, yeah. because he decided to, to to announce that, look, if there was a forward party car, it wouldn't turn left or right. It would just go straight ahead, which is greeted with a whole bunch of people saying, so it would be a useless car, right? <laughs> you can't drive those in the city. That's for no. sure. No. Drive them right this off a cliff, though. <laughs> this week in, yes, even Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger News, every single House Republican voted to default on our national debt rather than paying for the $7 trillion spending spree they went on during the Trump administration. Yes, even Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger? No! Yes, yes even them, because they're Republicans. Uh, this is via David Axelrod on Twitter on a day when the Chicago Fraternal Order of Police urged its members to resist a city vaccine mandate came the sad and ironic news that the union's former president has died of, you heard, you guessed, COVID-19. And from the New York Times, hundreds of police officers have died from COVID. Vaccines remain a hard sell. Far more law enforcement officers in the United States have died from COVID-19 than from any other work-related cause in 2020 and 2021. Even so, police unions are fighting vaccine mandates. We have to wonder where they get their news. Yeah. Back the blue, right into an early grave. Mm -hmm. That's uh, too bad. That really is, is too bad. It's insane. It is insane. But they are insane. We know this. Now, remember those hundreds of billions of dollars of your tax money that we shipped to Afghanistan? Well, CNN has helpfully listed some of the things that you bought with your money. There's a half a billion dollars of aircraft that flew for about a year. There's a huge $85 million hotel that was never opened and sits in disrepair. There are camouflage uniforms for the Afghan army whose fancy pattern would cost an extra $28 million. There's a healthcare facility listed as located in the, quote, Mediterranean Sea. These are part of a catalog of, quote, waste, fraud, and abuse complaints made against the United States reconstruction efforts in Afghanistan, an effort totaling $145 billion over, 100, over 20 years, made by the United States' own Inspector General. This week, Virginia GOP Secretary of State candidate and Arizona audit advocate Mark Fincham brought a rally mob to their feet by declaring that Donald Trump won. This was shortly after a flag flown at the January 6th insurrection was brought on stage and the crowd said the Pledge of Allegiance to it, as if it is some sort of sacred artifact. It's, it's, this is straight fascist shit. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, in local news, at a St. Charles, Illinois school board meeting, a member has resigned over alleged harassment. Citing unrelenting harassment by community members, St. Charles school board member Carolyn Weibel on Tuesday resigned from the board. It's a volatile time in our district, community, state, and country, she said in a statement. It's a delicate balance between free speech and safety and security. It has escalated into being an unsafe environment at board meetings in my car and in my home. During Tuesday's St. Charles School Board meeting, she described some of the ways she's been harassed to her fellow board members. 
Someone has harassed me in my in my face walking into meetings when I was on a walker. I've had dead animals thrown into my driveway. My house has been vandalized. I've been followed and videotaped in a grocery store shopping with my son. My home was broken into. My car was vandalized. And these people continue to libel me, she said, during the public comment portion of the meeting. And the, the Department of Justice, this is just like January 6th. They need to go after the people that are funding this bullshit. Because remember. It's the Cokes. It is. It's the Cokes and all of their little imitators. And let's remember that before January 6th, there were mobs breaking into state capitals, Mm -hmm. practicing all over the country, breaking into state capitals, trying to find the governor who they could take hostage and murder, trying to overthrow legislation. These are all the same lunatics. And they're loose and they feel entitled and there's no one standing between them and our democracy. And it's a loss. I mean, this this war on school boards and and now, of course, there are U.S. senators who supported the January 6th insurrection and raised mm-hmm. their fists saying, oh, why are you blaming parents who just have opinions? I know. If this you're is- vandalizing someone's house and you have an attorney that used to be Trump's attorney mm-hmm. who has been hired for you, and that's what's in Judd um website today, that... All of a sudden, these, you know, so such and such county women's women for schools club mm-hmm. have high powered attorneys. Really? That's real interesting. Well, and this is the this is the reason for this is they don't have town hall meetings to go to and scream at people anymore. Right. Right. This is extremely reminiscent of ordinary raucous, but, you know, understood, you get two minutes to speak, town hall meetings that were suddenly, during the Obama administration, flooded with lunatics screaming about, I don't want my country turned into Soviet Russia. Healthcare is communism. And you find out that person gets a lifetime job at some Koch brothers outfit. And she did. And she still is working for them. Yes, she is. But it was an orchestrated attack on the softest point in Mm -hmm. democracy, where you have public officials who are there just to answer your questions as best they can and maybe engage in a little back and forth. And school board members who've never, you know, their names are never in the paper. They are never, they're there to serve. Right. They're there to talk mostly about how do we get the school lunches, you know, done correctly. And we have a bunch of kids who are out with smallpox. And and how do we get backpacks to poor children? Suddenly confronted with a mob, an organized mob. They're showing up all over the place. violent mob. Yeah. yeah. And and the way you combat these people is by pushing back on them very hard. And, and swiftly putting them in jail for their crimes. Yeah. If they are guilty of harassment or a weapons crime. I mean, the other the other woman who was speaking said she didn't want to talk about it. And I'm sure she didn't want to talk about it because she didn't want to encourage it. Right. Well, people you remember- carrying guns behind her house. Remember how James Garner kept Bruce Dern in jail in support your local sheriff because the, the the cell had no bars. Right. And Bruce Dern was horrified. And James Garner just dribbled a little red paint on the floor and said, that's the last guy who tried to get out of here. Yeah. So I'll just you stay know? here. I'll yeah. just stay here. Okay. You need to make sure these people know there are going to be swift, harsh consequences, social consequences. Yeah. These well, assholes that, should what... not be allowed to walk into a, a grocery store. Without everyone pointing at them, that's the asshole who terrorizes teachers. Yeah. And I'm sorry, but pointing out assholes who terrorize the public in public is not the same as terrorizing people in public. No. And and that's what these judges in the January 6th cases are saying. You've got to have 45 J's in jail. Yeah. Because there's got to be a consequence. To treason. And, Insurrection well, and treason. I, I lost my job and I can't earn a living Good. for my family. And it's like, yeah. Good. You went and broke the law. You tried anyway. to. You tried to overthrow our democracy. <laughs> you tried to overthrow our democracy you know? and you were violent about it. And uh, you got to go to big boy jail now. Yeah, for for a month or two. It should be mm-hmm. several years. That should be the penalty for attempting to overthrow the American democratic system. But I'll take what I can get. A slap on the wrist won't do. A slap on the wrist just means they get out of jail like in Goodfellas. Mm-hmm. You know, you did your bit. You did it like a man. You didn't talk. You know, everybody gets pinched. I don't want these people being heroes because they're being punished for being traitors. Mm-hmm. I want mm-hmm. the act of treason to be carry such social consequences that they will never, ever do it again. They'll well, go that's back to the point, it. is that the next time they're invited to get on a bus and go to Washington, D.C. Say, for no, freedom, they'll say, oh, no. No, 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 no. That's okay. And I know the FBI is listening to my phone, just like 
Matt Gates. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't get to that. All Matt Gates' friends think that uh, his texts are being uh, read by the FBI, so they won't text him. I'm and sure they one, are. One Republican uh, colleague of his apparently said, "We're all just sitting around with popcorn, waiting to see what happens." Yeah. Well, and that's why or, Matt Gates now refers to the Republican Party over the phone as this thing of ours. You know. <laughs> Hey, each week we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitty is Panama Halen. Panama Halen is a former stray with plenty of tortitude. She used to live in a colony, but the caretaker brought her into a shelter because she was too friendly not to be a pet kitty. She's very curious and needs to investigate everything. In the photo, she is snuggling on a tiny couch that her owner crocheted for her. It mm-hmm. looks a little bit like the Simpsons couch. It's hilarious. <laughs> you really need to go look at it. Um, the owner said, I should make one for Bosco. Bosco wouldn't sit on a crocheted no. couch that I would make for no, him. He needs a high place from which he can lord it over everyone He else. does. Yeah. And uh, he also, um, one of my Twitter followers who's local uh, had a lot of yarn uh, that his wife no longer needed and he needed a place to donate it. So he dropped it off at my church and I went and picked it up and brought it home to sort. It's in these garbage bags and Bosco slept on the garbage bags for like two and a half hours. So uh, that's pretty much Bosco. He doesn't need a hand crocheted sofa, but Panama Halen's hand crocheted personal sofa, personal side sofa is just amazing. And of course, Panama Halen eats freshly poured cat food, our fake sponsor. Whether you serve pet store perfection or dollar store dreck, your cats will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the food they eat is only freshly poured. Freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh my Lord, it's freshly poured. And you can visit Panama Halen at our Facebook page or website. And you can send your internet kitty, dog, or other pet to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go, Postal Unions. Letter on the air unless you say otherwise. The Postal Service has had a rough week. Um, There have been shootings, and uh, we want you Postal Union employees to know that we're with you, care about you. We are and we do. Hashtag fire to joy. Mm Mm-hmm. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job. And it's a labor of love. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Our PayPal postal address information, merch, and uh, buy me a coffee. It's all there, proleftpod.com. Please share our show on social media. And if you love this podcast, Please get someone else to listen to. We thank you for doing that. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Well, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties remember last year's war on Christmas. A war on TV. A war with no battles, no monuments, only casualties. And can you tell me what movie that's from? <laughs> <laughs> I can. It's from it, Hunt for Red October. It is. And it's it, it, it's on uh, continuously now, which, you know, is good for me. Because it's because October. It's very comforting, and it is October, and it's the October movie that doesn't involve people having their throats cut, which that's is great. That's what it is. I think mm-hmm. that's right. That's right. Thank you, Drift Class. I love Lo- you. Love you, too. Bye, darling. Bye. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, lovey dovey. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2021 DGBG Productions.